thank you to our sponsors for this event, Rex Bookstore and Central Books. And now it is with honor to introduce to you our lecturer for today in criminal law, our very own Dean Jamalito Festin. So Dean Festin earned his Master of Laws degree from San Sebastian College of Recollectos in the year 2014, where he was confirmed with Beni Meritus, an honor equivalent to Magna Cum Laude. He also earned his degree in Bachelor of Laws from the same college. Prior to law school, he finished his bachelor's degree in psychology and earned units in the program Master in Psychology at the University of Santo Tomas. He is the author of several books such as The Alternative Dispute Resolution and the Arbitration Law, Bar Review Guide to Criminal Law, and Insight to the Bar Exams, Special Proceedings, A Foresight to the Bar Exam, Criminal Law Reviewer Volume 1, A Foresight to the Bar Exam Series, and Special Penal Laws, Criminal Law Reviewer Volume 2, A Foresight to the Bar Exam Series. He is a professor of law, teaching foundation, and review subjects in criminal law, as well as remedial law, and an MCLE and bar review lecturer. Dean Festin has been serving as the Dean of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines College of Law for more than 11 years now and has been rendering services as the Director of the PUP Bar Review Center or the PBRC and the Refreshers Enhancement Capacity Program or RECAP. He is a member of the Board of Trustees of the Philippine Judicial Academy and currently he is the President of the Philippine Association of Laws schools and has served as such since 2021. Once again, our lecturer for today, Dean Jamalito Fistin. Dean? Uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sherry. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I know it's raining hard uh, outside, but uh, we can consider that as a blessing coming from God, no? especially to, uh, uh, to our bar takers. No? Uh, first of all, in behalf of the Philippine Association of Law Schools, I would like to uh, thank our sponsors, the Rex, uh, the Rex Bookstore, the Central uh, Bookstore uh, over the years. No? And uh, this time we also have another uh, sponsor, which is the Association of Law Schools of the Philippines, no? ALSP. And of course, uh, uh, our partner since the inception of Caso Discurso, some six years ago, the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. Um, to all our bar takers, uh, keep cool, uh, maintain your composure, no? uh, and uh, just exercise your faith. No? Relax, no? see through the eyes of faith. So just before I start, let me just uh, encourage you. No? So what, what, what is faith? Faith is the substance of the things that we hope for. No? What are the things that we hope for? It has a substance and it's called faith. No? And it's also the evidence of things that we have seen. The evidence of things that see you are not a lawyer at the moment, but by December, you will become a lawyer. And you have to, to see through your eyes of faith. No? Uh, in your heart and in your mind, no? alam mo na magiging uh, abogado ka. No? As I've always men mentioned uh, this to my students, no, to uh, PUP, Manila Adventist College, uh, University of Makati, Bicol University, and, in, and even now at the DLSU, no, um, stay close to God and stay closer to your dream. Stay close to God and you will stay closer to your dream. Why? Because he's the one who have given you this uh, dream in your heart. So you need to fight for your dream. And he will help you and he will assist you. No? So, uh, medyo, ano lang, relax lang no? and don't panic. Now, what will be my topic for today? My topic is a special lecture relating to cases decided no, le uh, decided no less than by the Supreme Court and penned by uh, our 2023 bar chair, bar chair, who is uh, Justice Ramon Paul Hernando. So, lahat ng discuss ko would pertain to cases uh, penned by Justice Hernando. Okay? 
So let's start. Uh, Q1, please. So we'll start first with the basic principles in criminal law. Next. Next, please. Next slide, please. Um, the slide should show the equipoise rule, no? which is question number one. Uh, under the equipoise rule, where the evidence on an issue of fact is in equipoise, or there is doubt on which side the ev evidence preponderates the party having the burden of proof loses. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, Sherry, or anyone. Uh, sabi dito, when the evidence is equally balanced, uh, one favorable to the accused and one favorable to the prosecution, no, equally balanced, then it can be interpreted in favor of either then it will be should be the scale of justice should be tilted in favor of the accused why in consonance with the provision uh, with the constitutional provision on presumption of innocence no uh, okay so that should be number one on the equipoise rule so under this rule uh conviction rests that on uh, remember that yung conviction should not be based on the frailty of the defense but on the strength and sufficiency of the evidence no, of the prosecution. So in this case, however, sabi ng Supreme Court, uh, so far as uh, Ariola versus the Philippines, no, uh, the scales of evidence had already tilted heavily in favor daw ng defense, against the defense. So uh, this in other words, equipoise rule is not applicable. Supreme Court said that uh, it perceived no conflicting versions as the accused technically failed to set forth his own version in the first place. No? His guilt was finally established with the required quantum of evidence. And in quantum of evidence, they all proved the unreasonable doubt. So um, in this case, Supreme Court said to recall that testimony of the victim was stricken off the record for his consistent absences now on the scheduled dates for his cross-examination. So it was not even tendered as evidence. Only on appeal that he advanced this argument na about the equipoise rule. So even if time and procedure permit, uh, Supreme Court said that the accused by his own admission grounded his case solely and purely on hearsay. And this is only insufficient to counter the already compelling evidence presented against him by the prosecution. Okay, next slide, please, on conspiracy. Conspiracy, uh, let's just recall, ano bang mga principles sa conspiracy? Well, definition first, no? conspiracy exists when two or more persons come to an agreement uh, concerning the commission of the crime and they decide to commit the same. So, two factors, agreement, no? Anong agreement na yan? Agreement to commit the crime and a decision no, to commit such a crime. So, ano pa mga, anong principle? Mere conspiracy is not punishable. So, kung kasama ka, nag-participate ka to conspire as a general, no? Uh, to commit a felony, a crime, uh, that is not punishable. No? Unless no, there is a law that punishes such acts. So if A and B no, cons and C conspired to commit the crime of murder against X, no, they agreed. But on the actual date of the execution, it was only B and C who appeared and perform the role no, the, that is set forth pursuant or according to their agreement, A who did not appear uh, on the date of execution will not be liable. He, will, he can only be liable if he had already performed his acts no, uh, 
pursuant to the agreement. Pero ang agreement, halimbawa, uh, uh, the agreement is for him to bring B and C the scene of the crime, but he failed to do so. Oh, main conspiracy alone is not punishable. But if there is a law that punishes the same, then he will be liable for conspiracy to commit such a crime. Like if a uh, conspiracy to commit treason, rebellion, sedition, coup d'etat, no? uh, the anti-terrorism law, there is a, there are specific provisions in these laws that punishes mere conspiracy. So what if A, B, and C instead conspired to commit the crime of rebellion, but uh, B and C only appeared on uh, on the date and time agreed upon. A did not appear. No. Will he be? Will A be criminally liable? No. Ah, uh, yes, because there's such thing as conspiracy to commit rebellion. But B and C will now be liable for rebellion because they actually executed the crime. No. Ano pa? Um, another principle in conspiracy, tandaan nyo lang, is uh, the act, if there is conspiracy, no, whether it's an express conspiracy or implied conspiracy, the act of one is the act of all. So regardless of uh, the, the, the acts that they perform in the execution of the crime, uh, for as long as it is pursuant to the commission of the crime, uh, then they will all be liable. So kung kanina, ang participation ni A is to bring uh, the co-conspirators at the scene of the crime, si B is a lookout, and C is the one who, who would kill the victim. If A had performed his act no, na to bring uh, the, the, his co-conspirators at the scene of the crime, and he left, and then C killed the victim, the act of C is also the act of A. No? The act of A is the act of C. Regardless kung sino ang pumatay, sumaksak sa victim, for as long as there's conspiracy to commit murder and each one have performed their act, then all of them will be liable. And we will apply that the act of one is the act of all. A cannot just say that he's just a mere accomplice. No? Yun. So, uh, ano pa principle sa conspiracy? A person is liable for all the consequences noong, uh, all the, for the crime that they conspired to commit. But if a co-conspirator performed an act diff radically different from that which they agreed upon, that person alone should be held criminally liable. Now, I'm talking about the principle of, of conspiracy, no? Uh, pagdating sa special complex crime, it has its own rule. No? We don't have to confuse this with special uh, complex crime when by mere, by reason or location of robbery, somebody gets killed, all of them will be liable. No? That's the exception. But now, itong conspiracy, a person is liable only for the crime that they conspired to commit. Again, if other co-conspirators perform an act different, no, radically different from that which you ag they agreed upon, he alone should be liable. All the rest will be liable for only for the crime that they conspired to commit. So that's the general truth. Ngayon, uh, what is the consequence? Uh, there is also two kinds of conspiracy, express and implied. Express is, you know, you have to, act to prove the actual agreement you know, and the decision to come to the same. Implied conspiracy, it's hard to prove it. It's really have to, hard to, uh, to, to, to find a witness to testify you know, as to the, 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 the time that they really agreed upon uh, and specific acts that during performed during the conspiracy. But the agreement, here in implied conspiracy, the agreement you know, can be deduced from their acts. Kaya nga implied this. How can, you, uh, uh, how can that be? The acts showing that there is cre uh, commonality of criminal design, that they acted 
in the same unity of purpose and execution, then there's implied conspiracy. Now, whether it's expressed or implied, no, we will apply the principle that the act of one is the act of all. Sir, paano naman kung walang conspiracy? No? Kung walang conspiracy, uh, a person is liable only for his own individual act. So kung isang tao, si A, sinampal si, si X, si B naman, stab and killed X, and there's no showing that there is, con no, uh, no, no showing that there's conspiracy, A is only liable for the act of slapping, the injury sustained by the victim, which probably be, uh, what, slight or whatever physical injuries, no? Si B naman would be liable for killing uh, the victim. Could either be homicide or murder if the, there are, uh, or at least there's a qualifying aggravating uh, circumstance present. No? So tatandaan yun, no? individual act lang ang, uh, if there's no conspiracy. Now, ang conspiracy, tatandaan nyo, it cannot be based on mere conjecture. Depending surmises lang, akahaka lang, or gut feel, no? It must be proof, proven as the crime itself, meaning the quantum of evidence should be also a proof beyond reasonable doubt, no? So, tatandaan yun. Uh, let's go to, uh, specifically, merong decision si Justice Hernando on implied conspiracy. Okay? Uh, direct proof of conspiracy is rarely found. Uh, for criminals do not write down their lawless plans and plots. Ang hirap, di ba? Kailangan kumuha ka pa ng state witness, no? Para babaligtad sa kanila. The agreement to commit a crime, however, may be deduced from the mode and manner of the commission of the offense or inferred from the acts that point to a joint purpose and design, concerted action, and community of intent. Ito yung sabi ko kanina, na implied conspiracy. Now, uh, ano ba dito sa kaso na to, no? People versus Cabarino. Ang sabi sa Supreme Court, it in this case, no, it is very clear that conspiracy, connivance, and unity of purpose and intention were present kailan? During the execution of the crime. The Supreme Court was convinced that the prosecution was able to prove that yung the time of the attack accused Appellants simultaneously fired their firearms simultaneously, no, sabay sabay fired their firearms at the houses in the direction of the plaza, killing the victim as a consequence thereof. No? Sabi ng Supreme Court also, in addition, that their collective act, act, collective and individual acts demonstrating the existence of a common design. What is that common design to kill uh, the victim in this case? It is also evident also from the unabated testimony of a witness that he heard one of the accused appellants now order his companions to retreat, which they all did upon the arrival of the re police reinforcement uh, from other place. Okay? Okay. Question number three, please. What is the consequence if there is conspiracy? Next slide. It did not matter who inflicted the mortal wound. No? As the act of one is the act of all and in each incurred the same criminal liability. As I mentioned in the illustration, uh, kanina, no? Now, even if his action is only to bring hit the co-conspirators at the scene of the crime, and he was not the one who stabbed and killed the victim, no, the act of uh, his co-conspirator is likewise his same act. Meaning to say, they incurred the same criminal liability. Next, please. Well, what is the consequence? Is there failure to establish a conspiracy. I've mentioned that a while ago. Next. Failure to establish the existence of the conspiracy renders each accused only liable, again, for their own specific acts or individual acts. No? 
So, tatandaan nyo. A consequence, again, if there is no conspiracy. Consequence, if there is conspiracy. Hairline lang ang different. No? If you conclude, no, by reading the bar question, that there exists a conspiracy, then apply mo na yun. The act of one is the act of one. If you are convinced na walang conspiracy, panindigan mo na. Consequently, if there's no con uh, a conspiracy, then uh, the liability falls under individual acts of the assailant. No? Yon. Question. What is the quantum of evidence to establish conspiracy? Okay. Conspiracy as a manner of incurring liability whenever alleged must be proved with the same quantum of evidence as the crime itself or to establish an element of the offense. That is by proof beyond reasonable doubt. Tatandaan nyo, no? A conspiracy cannot be based on mere conjectures, suspicion, or surmises. It must be proved as the crime itself. Meaning, the existence must be proved by what quantum of evidence? Also, by proof beyond reasonable doubt. Kaya nga sinabi na dito, yung kaso na to, it's an example of implied conspiracy. Supreme Court said that while it is true that the elements of conspiracy must be proved by proof beyond reasonable doubt necessary to establish the physical acts continuing the crime itself, this is not to say that direct proof of such conspiracy is always required. The existence of conspiracy need not at all times be established by direct evidence, nor is it necessary to prove prior agreement between the accused to commit the crime charge. Sabi ng court, Thus, the rule is settled that conspiracy may be inferred, as I mentioned a while ago, from the conduct of the accused. When? Conduct ng accused before and after the commission of the crime. For such conduct reasonably shows no, that there is community of criminal purpose or design. Pag sinabi niyang may implied conspiracy, use the magic words. There is community of criminal purpose or design. They acted in unison. In, in, in unison no? Their uh, unanimity in action and execution thereof. Supreme Court said that you know, when they reviewed the records of the case, no, it revealed that the conduct of the accused appellants when? Before the commission of the crime, during the commission of the crime, and after the commission of the crime, together with that of another accused, no, showed conspiracy on their part, and that they all had an equal hand in killing the victim. No? It is thus inescapable that, when, that what transpired was a fight between the victim at yung joint forces nitong mga akusado. That led to the victim's demise, unfortunately. No? Uh, kaya nga, in conclusion, sabi ng Supreme Court, if you analyze now these two versions of the parties, it is readily apparent that they will gang, uh, gang up on him. No, They brought the victim at a detour, fought, and mortally wounded him. What else? They even participated in the disposing of the body and went home together after the gruesome incident and not reporting the incident to the authority. So what does it show? The circumstances were all geared towards the accomplishment of the same unlawful object indicating closeness of personal association and concurrence of their own sentiment. No? Yon. So that it, 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 it becomes inconsequential to prove who delivered the death blow no? considering that there was implied conspiracy from the actions no? thereby making the act of one is the act of all okay so let's go to entirely different topic uh, justifying circumstances um discuss muna natin difference between justifying and exempting 
In both instances, no criminal liability. But the reason is different. The rationale is different. In justifying, there's no criminal liability because the crime is deemed to be uh, uh, a lawful act. There is no crime because the act is deemed to be lawful. No? Like self-defense, it's a lawful act. No? So there's no crime. Unlike in exempting, no, there is a crime committed. But there's no criminal liability. Pwede ba yun, sir? Yes. Uh, the, the child, assuming that the child is uh, below 15, like 14 years old, who killed, who stabbed and killed his classmate. Is there a crime? Yes. Is there criminal liability? No, because what? It uh, He lacked intelligence. Accepting circumstance. So in accepting, there's a crime committed uh, but no criminal liability because of the absence of any elements of voluntariness. Like freedom, intelligence, no intent, freedom. Kung merong irresistible force, walang freedom, well, no criminal liability. Intelligence, no? like in this case uh, that I gave you as an example, a crime committed by a minor child, 14 years of age, is an exempting. The difference is in, in civil liability. In justifying, there is no criminal as well as civil liability. No? Meron ba exception, sir, sa, the, where the, in, in justifying, there is a civil liability? Yes. This is only a general rule under paragraph 4 of Article 11, which is what? No, state of necessity. Avoidance of a greater evil. That's when we have civil liability. But all the rest, generally, no civil liability. Now, in accepting, there is, there is civil liability as a general rule. So there's no criminal liability, but there's civil liability. Except those falling under paragraphs 4 and 7 of Article 12. Article 12 speaks about exempting. <clears throat> Article 4 speaks about accident. Article 7 speaks about uh, insuperable, when prevented by uh, an insuperable cause. So, walang civil liability in those two cases. So, let's go specifically uh, to the justifying circumstance of self-defense. Next, please. Question 6. So, what are the elements of uh, self-defense? Alam niyo na to, no? Alam niyo na to. Oh, di ba? URL, a lawful aggression on the part of the victim, uh, uh, reasonable necessity of the means employed by the accused to prevent or repel the same, and lack of sufficient provocation on the part of the person defending himself. Okay? Uh, itong sa kaso na ito, ang, ang pangyayari ganito, Yung mga victim, A and B na lang, tawagin natin, were watching TV with their daughter and neighbor. When a case M uh, surreptitiously entered the house at Mistab, si, si A with a knife. Tapos, subuk, nung akisado after stabbing A, gusto niyang stab si B, but uh, unfortunately, she was able to parry the attack. Unfortunately for A, he died, no? And uh, authorities arrested M uh, or the accused at his uh, house, uh, house, no? Uh, in defense, ang sabi ni Akusado, si M, no? That uh, he denied the narrative that he attacked, that he attacked the victim, no? The accused claimed that there was a commotion earlier that took place where B hit L, the accused battered on the head. So when, ang uh, sabi niya, he confronted B, Hence, A attacked M and the latter in defense killed uh, victim A. So, ibig sabihin, uh, self-defense on his part, no? Ang sabi niya, walang treachery. And that he even voluntarily surrendered as well as he peacefully went with the authorities now upon his arrest. So, can 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 uh, self-defense be appreciated in this court, in this case? Um Sabi ng, 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 ng Supreme Court, no, no, walang self-defense on this part, no? Self-defense cannot be justly appreciated when uncorroborated by independent and competent evidence or when it is 
extremely doubtful no by itself no do they version ng supreme court at ang burden ay on 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 the accused to rebut that presumption if no unlawful aggression is proved no self defense may be successfully needed okay let's go to accepting circumstances no specifically of uncontrollable fear question number 7 What are the elements of uncontrollable fear? Alam niyo na rin ito, no? The existence of uncontrollable fear at yung fear na yon must be real at imminent. That yung fear, fear na injury ay hindi less than, no? Dapat greater than or at least equal to that committed, no? Uh, pa, kung sinabi yung patayin mo si A, alam ba, professor, patayin mo si A, otherwise iba bagsak ka sa examination mo, di ba? It's that it, Equal or if much less, yung greater, but it's less than, so hindi applicable. Now, a threat of a uh, future injury in, uh, injury is insufficient. The compulsion must be of such a uh, character as to leave no opportunity for the accused to escape. Yan ang, uh, ang punchline dito, no? A threat of future injury is insufficient. The compulsion must be of such a character as to leave no opportunity for the accused to escape. Dito naman sa amin ng court, uh, as correctly found out daw ng lower court, no? uh, yung akusado, si Z is not entitled to avail of this accepting circumstance. No? Uh, why? Because yung malefactors had a well-hatched plan to commit the crime of robbery with homicide. And that Z was not only well aware of every detail thereof, but likewise, hindi lang siya well aware, But likewise, participated in its commission. No? So, as as found out by the CA, the Philistine and Supreme Court, there was no genuine, imminent, and reasonable threat to his life and his family as he was an active participant in the commission of the crime. He acted on his own free will. No? and was not under the impulse of uncontrollable fear as he claimed. No? Uh, sabi ng Supreme Court, while he refused to kill the victim, he nonetheless delivered the fatal blow to the other person and stabbed another person at her back using a chopping knife without any prodding or compulsion from his companion. Let's go to another circumstance. which is under Article 13 of the uh, RPC, no? mitigating circumstance. So how do you differentiate mitigating from uh, aggravating circumstances? Mitigating circumstance, if present, without any generic, yung ordinary mitigating. There are two types, no? ordinary at uh, privileged mitigating. Pag ordinary, if present and without uh, the presence of any generic aggravating circumstance would be would reduce the penalty to its minimum period generally so when we talk about ordinary mitigating generally we talk about uh, reduction to the minimum period in the absence of any generic aggravating no? now in so far as uh, aggravating circumstances are concerned No, it will increase the penalty to its maximum period if present without the presence of any mitigating circumstance. No, uh, of course, no. The ones tandaan yun to, no. The ones that we use for the rule of upsetting, no, sa divisible penalty, no ordinary mitigating lang at uh, generic aggravating. There are other types of uh, aggravating. Ge uh, aside from generic, you have uh, inherent, no? you have qualifying. It changes the nature of the crime. It has also special uh, uh, aggravating and specific. Now, the ones that you're going to use to less, to those, uh, whether, uh, whether to lessen or increase the penalty, Uh, uh, in its sa period will be an ordinary mitigating lang at generic aggravating lang. Ang qualifying wag yung gagamitin yan because it all it is all uh, equally it uh, changes the nature of the crime. 
like in murder and homicide, if, the, if any of the qualifying aggravating circumstances are present, then it's murder. But sabi intent to kill, ah, pag walang qualifying aggravating, homicide yan. Remember, the common element is that there is intent to kill. And it will not fall under parricide, no? infanticide, no? uh, uh, crime. Okay? So let's go uh, to mitigating circumstance of voluntary surrender. What are the elements of voluntary surrender? Okay? In this case, well, again, uh, and explain lang, anong elements of uh, voluntary surrender? I'm sure you already memorized it. No, the accused has not been actually arrested. Uh, second, the accused surrenders himself to a person. Ang surrender, tandaan nyo lang ha, hindi sa private person. Sa PIA lang or sa agent of PIA. Sino ba yung uh, person in authority? Uh, those vested with jurisdiction. Like si mayor, di ba? Si barangay chairman, no? Uh, pag latter's agent, uh, so pwede yung mga, the one charged with the maintenance of public uh, uh, peace and order as a general rule. So, uh, doon lang sa dalawa pwede mag-surrender. No? Indicated by law. No? And of course, the surrender is voluntary. So, the essence of voluntary surrender uh, is spontaneity and the intent of the accused to give himself and submit himself to the authorities, either because he acknowledges his guilt or he wishes to save the authorities the trouble and expense that may be incurred for his search, uh, for his search and capture. Now, if it's just a matter of time that he will be arrested, no, uh, hindi ko consider a voluntary surrender. Kung na papaligiran na lang siya, ano? Uh, but it's just a matter of time uh, na siya ay uh, maaari, then uh, this will not be appreciated. Kasi ang intent dapat dito ay wishes to save the authorities the trouble and expense that may be incurred for his search and capture. No? Sabi na sa pre-court, hindi present ito. Why? Because the facts established here is that the barangay authorities had to search for the accused and go to the place where he fled to. No? And only then was he arrested. So walang, clearly, walang voluntary surrender. Okay? Sige. Let's go to aggravating circumstance. Specifically of treachery. No? Ang treachery, no? generic aggravating yan sa a crime ng murder. So, maraming questions sa murder and specifically uh, what what they the bar exams would use would be the uh, element the, the 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 circumstance of treachery. So let's just have a review. Uh, when is there treachery? There is a uh, treachery when the offender commits any of the crimes against the person employing what means methods and forms in the execution thereof which tend to directly and especially ensure its execution without risk to himself arising from the offense which offended what he might take in other words uh ito na to is just the definition given from the codal provision but specifically what are the elements no uh, in order for the qualifying circumstance of treachery to be appreciated, the following requisites must be uh, shown. The one is that employment of means, methods, or manner of execution that will ensure the safety of the malefactor from the defensive or retaliatory acts of the victim. And second is the means, methods, or manner of execution was deliberately or consciously adopted by the offender. The essence of treachery is a deliberate uh, and uh, sudden attack, affording the hapless, unarmed, and unsuspecting victim no chance to resist or to escape. Ito lang yan. Elements of treachery, para madaling yung tandaan. Unang-una, no opportunity for the victim to defend himself. No? no opportunity for the victim to defend himself. Meaning to say, the attack was sudden and unexpected. 
Supreme Court decision is to the fact that he has no inkling, no? But his life is in danger. Katulad ng in the act of ano, shaking hands. Bigla na lang siya nagsasak, sinaksak. Nagiinuman sila, nagtatagay sila, sinaksak siya. Di ba? O nag-i-use siya ng mga cellphone. Ng cellphone, sa, tal- sa talikuran niya, pinagsasaksak siya. The examples that I gave you are real, ano, no? uh, Supreme Court decision to. So no opportunity to defend himself. The, the attack came as a, such a sudden and unexpected. Unexpe- and that the victim had no inkling that his life is in danger. The second element, it's not or, but these two must concur. Huh? The second uh, is that uh, it was CD. No? It was consciously and deliberately adopted by the offender to ensure its execution. No? So that there will be no chance for the victim to resist or to escape or to defend himself no killing the victim when he is asleep no will be would fall under this one no it must be consciously and deliberately adopted dalawa yan now ang tatandaan niyo sa treachery again para sa conspiracy it cannot be based on mere uh, conjectures or surmises it must be proved also no as the crime itself now many many students would uh, uh, are, are confused between uh, treachery and evident premeditation. So if you're gonna argue this in the bar examination, go with the elements of treachery from that of evident premeditation. So how do you differentiate uh, treachery and evident premeditation? Next, please. As I've said, the essence of treachery is that the attack is deliberate and without a warning done in a swift and unexpected way no, affording the hapless unarmed and unsuspecting victim no chance to resist or escape the essence of evident premeditation is that the execution of the crime must be preceded ito na ang evident premeditation ito mga magic keywords na gagamitin nyo kung if you conclude that there is evident premeditation. Uh, the criminal act must be preceded by full thought and reflection upon the resolution to carry out the criminal intent during the space of time sufficient to arrive at the calm judgment. Uh, in other words, ganito yun. Uh, TAL, di ba? Pagka evident premeditation, TAL, the time that he determined to commit the act, a is acts manifestly showing that he clung to his determination to commit the crime, and uh, L is sufficient lapse of the ta- la- sufficient lapse of time between the execution between the determination and the execution. Pag sinabing in second yung A clung to his determination to commit the crime, yun ang sinasabak that there is a time for him to uh, to to meditate upon the consequences of his act to reflect merong cool thought so yung pag sindi uh, inconsistent niyan pagka uh, um, crime was committed uh, because of you know y- y- yung passion and obfuscation inconsistent yung passion of obfuscation with with uh, uh, with uh, evident premeditation uh, Dito, sa kaso na to, sa People versus Eddie Manansala, a 2020 case penned by Justice Hernando, the accused uh, stealthily entered the house of the victim and killed him, shot him, no? while he was going upstairs. The fatal wound was inflicted from behind, sa likod, no? since the entry point was located at the back lumbar uh, region. At ang exit point ay yung, for, uh, yung front portion ng katawan ng biktima. At ang trajectory ng balay pataas, no? traversing upward. What does it show? Sabi sa Supreme Court, this clearly indicates that the victim was going upstairs with his back towards the assailant na sa likod when he was shot. So thus, the Supreme Court is in agreement with the OSG that treachery attended the killing 
as the victim's position rendered him defenseless from the sudden attack from behind. No? At nakita rin to sa, ano, eh, sa CCTV. No? Uh, so ang tanong, meron bang, ano, meron bang evident premeditation naman? Uh, sabi ng Supreme Court, uh, no, was that, you know, you know, unable to satisfactory establish the qualifying circumstance of evident premeditation. No? Ang, ang basihan lang ng lower court is in finding evident premeditation as attended to the crime, yung confrontation between the victim ano, and the, the, the assailant, no, the accused, one day before the killing. So ang ginawa ng trial court, eh, sa, nag-surmise lang siya that you know, the, the accused must have harbored uh, feelings of resentment towards the victim and has clung to that thought and killed the victim. Again, as I've told you, it cannot, no, this, this yung element na to cannot be just be based on the uh, conjectures or surmises. Papataas kasi yan ng ano, penalty, di ba? The credit. Okay. Uh, siguro, uh, i-add na rin. No? Evident premeditation must be based on external acts and must be eminent, evident. Kaya ka evident premeditation. Hindi naman pwedeng suspected uh, 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 suspected uh, meditation. No? Evident premeditation. No? Not merely uh, suspected, indicating deliberate planning. So, pag may plano yan, most probably, magpo-fall na sa evident premeditation yan. Nevertheless, despite the absence of ano naman, ng evident premeditation in this case, the killing remains to be murder. Bakit? Kasi napatunayan that there's a qualifying circumstance of treachery. Okay. Next. Must the qualifying circumstances be properly pleaded in the information? Baka itanong sa criminal procedure lang at dito rin sa criminal law. No? Uh, lagyan lang natin. Yes, alam na natin dito yung mga aggravating should be uh, alleged. No? Like treachery. No? Treachery uh, was alleged in the information and duly established by the prosecution, the appellant's con uh, conviction for the crime of murder is proper. However, evident premeditation as a qualifying uh, circumstance cannot be appreciated in the case for failure of the prosecution to specifically allege in the information the acts constituting it. And mere reference to evident premeditation is not sufficient because it is in the nature of a conclusion of law and not factual averment. So, just relate this to your criminal procedure. Next. Question 13. Can there be treachery when the attack is preceded by a heated words of exchange between the accused and the victim? Answer? No. Supreme Court said that crimes preceded by heated altercations are generally not attended by treachery. Yung mga chance encounters impulse killing or crimes committed at the spur of the moment no or that were preceded by heated altercation especially dun sa mga motorista di ba nagbanggaan nagmurahan uminit ng ulo are generally uh, not attended by treachery for lack of opportunity of uh, of the accused to deliberately employ a treacherous mode of attack there can be no treachery when the attack is preceded. This is ano, the punchline. Ano? Uh, no treachery when the attack is preceded by a heated exchange of words between the accused and the victim or when the victim is aware of the hostility of the assailant towards the former. Okay. Uh, dito sa kaso nito, yung accused, nagkaroon sila ng altercation with the victim eh, before he finally lost his patience. Kasi nag nagmurahan, so bumunod siya ng baret. And when slapped to the ground after getting shot in the neck, no, tumakas na si 
accused or the offender no ah uh, yon uh, ang sabi ng supreme court ay uh, walang treachery bakit uh, uh, allegres uh, ace uh, after more of a result of a sudden impulse or of a uh, moment decision spur of the moment decision due to his previous heated altercations with the victim rather than a plan and deliberate action there is no con uh, showing that he uh, consciously employed a particular mode of attack in order to facilitate the killing without risk himself it appears that a shot me because he got fed up and was carried away by anger yung kanyang emotions arising from his confrontation with the deceased person uh, so ergo he can a can only be convicted of homicide and not murder tandaan nyo the homicide murder common element intent to kill hindi totoo ang chismes na uh, pag murder ay may intent to kill at homicide ay walang intent to kill mali yun pareho silang may intent to kill the difference is that the presence of what we call as qualifying aggravating circumstances if present the crime will be uh, murder if not, then it's a uh, uh, homicide. Now, remove intent to kill. Uh, then, if the if the victim survives, it probably it will be physical injuries. No, physical injuries. Walang intent to kill. Okay. Pero pag nabatay, yung biktima, intent to kill is presumed. No, tandaan niya. Okay. Next, please. Question, does retaliation as a result of the victim, ayan ha, meron ta, ano, if nakaretaliate siya, pero based daw doon sa victim's reflexes, okay, uh, will it negate uh, treachery? Naka, ano siya, uh, nakaretaliate siya, pero it was considered as a uh, victim's uh, reflexes. This case of People versus uh, Gerald Moreno E. Tasson, Supreme Court said that no retaliation of the victim as a result of his reflexes no, uh, does not negate treachery. Mijares was not able uh, to put up defense, although he kicked and at all. He was able to kick and push the appellant out of the room. This did not negate the presence of treachery. Uh, a Supreme Court cited the case of People versus Baltazar. It was ruled the treachery must still be appreciated, even if the victim was uh, able to retaliate as a result of his reflexes. No, so long as he did not have the opportunity to repel the initial result. If I were the bar examiner, ita isa i, 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 Itatanong ko to, kasi yung common understanding natin, oh, no opportunity to defend. Ay, naka-defend din siya. Naka-defend siya. Hindi ang sarili, nakasipa. No? Pero dapat, i-qualify mo rin. It, do, it does not necessarily mean that there's retaliation. No? Treachery is not present. Now, you argue, no? If it's, uh, kung, kung sabi mong treachery still present, sabihin mo na, because he was uh, able to retaliate as a result of his reflexes uh, uh, as long as uh, he did that but he did not have the opportunity to repel the initial attack no uh, so sabihin nyo lang he did not have the opportunity to repel the initial result despite the fact that no, there was retaliation as a result of his reflexes there is still treachery. Tandaan nyo to, baka lumabas sa bar. Ano pang sinabi Supreme Court dito, no? Sabi niya, Appellant's sudden attack on M while asleep in his own home amply demonstrate uh, treachery in the commission of the crime. No? Uh, M had no inkling, inkling of the impending attack that night or any peril to his person. Why? Because he felt secure sa kanyang bahay, di ba? Uh, M was not able to put up an effective defense. 
no? So nagising siya, but initially, nagising siya, although he kicked and pushed the appellant out of the room, no? Although he kicked and pushed the appellant out of the room, no, this did not negate the presence of treachery. Citing people versus Baltazar, it was ruled that treachery must still be appreciated even if the victim was able to retaliate as a result of his reflexes, so long as he did not have the opportunity to repel the initial result. Katandaan yun, no? Uh, ang, sabi, ang sabi ng appellant, no? there were defensive wounds on his arms. No? Uh, uh, this did not show, however, that the victim was able to put up an effective defense. The Supreme Court uh, no? finds that this wounds to be merely the result of reflex action. Reflex action on the part in a vain attempt to avoid the thrust of the knife. So that's the magic word, no? Pagka reflex, uh, as a result of his reflex, but there's an event, a vain attempt to, abo to avoid, no? the, 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 the trust of the knife, then uh, it will not negate uh, treachery. Uh, related din dito yung people's versus God, no? Uh, yung dito sa people versus uh, God, no? uh, the fact that a victim was able to stab one of his assailants was held as not negating the presence of treachery. Diba? Grabe, no? no? I was able to stab, but sabi mo, uh, it did not negate uh, the presence of treachery. Supreme Court said that the fact that the victim was able to, I don't know, to grab one of the bolos after he had already been hit, kinamanan siya, and used the same to stab one of his assailants, does not negate the presence of treachery in the commission of the crime. The went on, the went, Supreme Court went on to say that the characteristic and unmistakable manifestation of treachery is the deliberate and unexpected attack on the victim. No, ang pinaka essential dyan, yung deliberate at unexpected attack of the victim without any warning and without giving him the opportunity to defend or repel the initial result. No? Kasi dito, uh, nasaksak muna siya bago siya uh, nasaksak din yung asailan. No? Uh, si victim uh, 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 stabbed uh, the the accused no after he himself had already been wounded by the attack no so it so yung first attack no yung initial attack it was sudden and unexpected and ha he had no opportunity to offer what we call as an effective defense no uh dito no ang sabi supreme court is the uh, the victim several times so that he will not be arrested himself. He lodged a, a bladed weapon on the victim's uh, chest and back. So indeed, sabi ng Supreme Court, uh, it was treacherous. Kahit nang merong reflex, reflex siya no? to uh, retaliate. Okay? It may be as in the bar, remember that. Now let's go now to speak to uh, Book 2, no? uh, part 2, the Revised Penal Code. No? So let's see if any of the decisions uh, he, Justice Moon rendered. Falsification of a public document. Uh, what are the elements of uh, public document? Uh, I'm sure you're able to memorize this. When you talk about falsification of public documents, no offender is a public employee, officer, or not a republic. That secondly, that he takes advantage of his uh, official position. Third is that he falsifies a document by causing it to appear uh, that the persons have participated in any act or proceeding. And uh, lastly, that such person did not in fact so participate in the proceeding. I hope you are able to memorize those uh, no, acts of falsification. Uh, no. Ano man nangyari dito? Uh, ang admittedly, 
si P was a public officer, being the vice mayor of a certain city in Iloilo Ilo City at the time of the uh, material to the case. Ginawa niya is since he's the vice mayor, he took advantage of his, of his official position uh, together with a particular uh, co-accused. No? Anong pinosify niya? Yung minutes ng sangguniang bayan. Minutes no, ng SB on session held on a particular date. No? By making or preparing or intervening in the preparation thereof. To make it appear that the the, the sangguniang bayan deliberately uh, deliberated. No? Pinapakita nila na yung sangguniang bayan ay nag-deliberate daw sa issuance ng resolution number 30 uh, A and B giving the vice mayor the accused in this case the authority to enter into a contract with IBC with respect to the rechanneling of the Tigum River. Pero hindi naman nangyari yun. So there is uh, 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 causing it to appear that persons have participated in the act or proceeding where such persons did not in fact so participate and no proceeding actually took place. Next. Uh, when is the offender considered to have taken advantage of his or her official position in making the falsification? Okay. Answer. In falsification of public documents, the offender is considered to have taken advantage of his or her public official position in making the falsification when, number one, Meron siyang duty to make or prepare or otherwise to intervene doon sa pagpretara ng dokumento. No? To intervene in the preparation of a document and secondly, he or she has the official custody of the document uh, which he falsifies. Now in this case, all the accused contracts of services were submitted showing that they were engaged by the provincial government as J.O. Lao, job order, or J.O. employees uh, from the year uh, 2001 to 2003. So, pinakita rin yung DTR nila, daily time record. The TTRs and AR, which is the accomplishment reports, were likewise presented to substantiate the submission that they uh, rendered work no, in Rockwell Satellite Office in Davao City during the time material to the case. At uh, their record, finally, the records as certified by the HR department were adduced to prove that they indeed work as job order employees in the provincial government of Davao no? Oriental. However, to support its finding that these accused did not actually render work, ito naman ang nakita ng Sandigan Bayan. No? Sandigan Bayan took upon itself to examine their signatures in their contracts. Yung mga DTA, tinignan nila. Yung accomplishment reports, tinignan And went on to conclude that these were forged. Thus, could not uh, conclusively prove their rendition of work. And effectively, no, uh, they proved that there is no rendition of uh, work. No? So, in short, the Sandigan uh, Bayan relied uh, primarily on the alleged forged signatures of all the accused and convicted them for violation of RA as, uh, uh, of this crime. No? Na. Sabi the Supreme Court, in fine criminal intent is required in order to, to incur criminal liability under Article 171 of the RPC. Uh, in this case, the elements of malicious intent on the part of the accused appellants is sorely one thing. No, kasi hindi na convince uh, uh, ang Supreme Court sa ginawa ng Sandigan Bayan. It could never be presumed. It should have be uh, by clear and positive and convincing evidence. Now let's go to rape. Elements of rape, you know this already. Accused was had kernel uh, knowledge of the victim. Next slide, please. 
Okay, next slide, please. The accused had carnal knowledge of the victim. Second, the act was accomplished. Third, through the use or force or intimidation, or when the accused is deprived of reason or otherwise unconscious, and it's no longer under uh, 12 years old, but now is uh, under 16 years old. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the, the law was amended and raised the, the years from under 16 to under 12 to under 16 and so far statutory rate is concerned. No? Uh, elements of sexual assault, accused committed an act of sexual act, uh, assault by inserting, inserting his penis into another person's mouth or anal orifice, inserting instrument or object into the genital or anal orifice of another person. Uh, tandaan, eh, paano kung ang in-insert, uh, nag-insert ng object or instrument sa person's mouth? No? Would that be uh, deemed as uh, uh, sexual assault? No? Rape by sexual assault? Hindi. No? Hindi. Kasi dapat pag-instrument or object, hindi sa person's about sa genital or anal orifice lab of another person to constitute rape by sexual assault. No? Of course, that the act was uh, through the use of force or intimidation, the victim is uh, deprived of reason or otherwise uh, unconscious or is demented or uh, if uh, a statutory rape is uh, committed. Question. Uh, just a decision. Does a, does a penetrating uh, blow to vagina by a welding rod constitute rape by sexual assault? Yes, no? uh, sabi the Supreme Court. Minor victim received penetrating blow into her private part that almost extended to her anus by a welding rod wielded by a cute. No? Grabe ito kakusada na to. The severity of the genital Injury inflicted upon the victim uh, cannot be more telling of the uh, accused abusive intent. Natatandaan niyo lang sa rape. Can rape be committed? Uh, can rape uh, so be committed by uh, a man against another man? Yes, through sexual assault. Can rape be committed by a woman uh, against another woman? Yes, by sexual assault. No. Uh, or even against a man, no, by sexual assault, no. Uh, yung um, uh, yung sa statutory rape, no, tinaasta nila ang statutory rape, so under 16. Except kung sila yung si Tad Curie, no, uh, at uh, uh, age difference is uh, does not exceed three years. And uh, also, uh, hindi ito uh, not abusive relationship. No? But this exception is not applicable if the age is under 13. So, pag under, in, in, under 13, uh, kahit, na mag, no, kahit na sila ay mag-boyfriend, girlfriend, no? at an age difference is, 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 is not, does not exceed uh, 3 years, no, uh, hindi mag-apply if under 13. This, is, this will only be applicable if the age is 13 and under 2, under 16. No, where such exception would be applicable. The age difference does not exceed uh, 3 years. No, uh, and also it's not on an abusive uh, relationship and no, uh, that's a relation, romantic relationship. Sila. Question. Next, question 18. Question, uh, next question, please. Uh, do marital uh, relationship, uh, pre-marital relationships necessarily entail sexual intimacy? Uh, this is just a principle uh, enunciated by the court. Uh, pre-marital relationships do not necessarily entail sexual intimacy. Neither can the sexual behavior of a rape victim reverse her violator's criminal culpability. Premarital relationships do not necessarily entail sexual uh, 
intimacy, uh, then there can sexual behavior of a rape victim, reverse or violators criminal uh, culpability. I stand corrected. Sir. It must also be remembered, said the court, that the lack of consent is in the line crossed in non-statutory way. Romantic affairs voluntarily engaged into by a rape, a rape victim whether before, during, or after the rape incident will not override the established fact that their violator possibly obtain carnal knowledge of her without her consent. Okay. Next. Qualified rape. No? Elements of qualified rape. No? Sexual, number one, would be a sexual congress with a woman. Then by force and without consent, they... The age is under 18 at the time of the rape. At titignan nyo, offender, ah, meron mga lumabas sa bar exam na ito. Eh. No? Paano nagiging qualified? Ang mga offender is ito yun. Either yung parent, whether legitimate or illegitimate or adopted, ascendant, step, parent, no? guardian, relative by consanguinity or affinity within the third civil degree, or the common law spouse of the parent of the victim. No? So, tandaan nyo yan. Ah, ito, yung, yung relationship no, to the victim, the accused and to the victim, no, uh, accused appellant's relationship to the victim as her mother's live-in partner cannot be appreciated Unfortunately, since this uh, circumstance was not alleged in the formation, although it was uh, proven during trials, you have to prove, you have to allege that, that, that circumstance. Next, question 21. Must there be actual force, threat, or intimidation in qualified rape? Kailangan ba ng, uh, ng force pa, intimidation, threat sa qualified rape? Answer, in qualified rape, when the offender is the victim's father, no, there's no need to be a, to have an actual force or threat or uh, intimidation. Kasi, yung moral ascendancy or influence niya over, the, uh, over his child no, substitutes for violation, for violence and intimidation. So, enough na yung moral ascendancy or influence pag qualified step, hindi na kinakailangan ipakita pa yung ihanapin pa yung violence at intimidation. Another question. Is the allegation in the information that the offender is the maternal uncle of the victim sufficient to constitute the qualifying circumstance of relationship? Ang nakalagay doon, nakalagay sa lang sa info ay uh, ang offender, eh, mater ng uncle ng victim. Sufficiente na to o hindi pa? Sabi ng court. Next, please. Yes, the court considered the qualifying circumstance of relationship even without specific allegation that the same was within the third civil degree of facility or affinity. Since the information therein already described the offender as the maternal uncle of the victim. Next, question. Should the minority of the victim or, or his or relationship with the offender be alleged in the information to qualify rape? Supreme Court said the minority of the victim and his relationship with the offender should both be alleged in the information and proven during uh, trial, be reasonable doubt, no? Uh, in order to qualify the rape charge as these circumstances have the effect of altering the nature of the rape and its corresponding uh, penalty. Otherwise, that penalty cannot be imposed uh, upon the offender. Okay, uh, sige. Next, please. Special complex crime of rape with homicide. Pag sinabing special complex crime, anong nasa isip nyo? Two crimes are committed. 
but punished under a single provision under the RPC. No? Uh, this is totally different from Article 48, which is complex crime proper or no or compound complex crime. Iba yun. Sa port, Article 48, alam natin when a single act constitutes two or more grave or less grave felonies, or when it is a necessary means to commit another, anong penalty? The penalty is for the most serious crime. Impose it in its maximum period. Datatandaan yung Article 48. No? Pagka Article 48, no, yung dalawang crime, hindi determine mo kung sino mas mataas. Pag determine mo kung sino mas mataas, impose mo sa maximum period. Like, uh, for example, uh, uh, direct assault with homicide. No? Ang, ang, ang namatay ay barangay chairman in knowledge. Uh, kaya niya penalized because uh, may, ang tingin niya may atraso si chairman sa kanya. No? May, may sama siya ng loob. So between homicide and uh, direct assault, which one is the most serious crime? Homicide. Then you impose it to its maximum period, whatever the penalty provided under RPC. Right? Eh, sa, paano sir, kung sa Article 48 ay merong ordinary mitigating? Eh, sabi ng Article 48, uh, imposed mo daw sa maximum period. Uh, do we apply the rule of setting? No. Because this is what we call a special complex crime. It cannot be uh, 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 offset by any ordinary mitigating. Always impose it to its maximum period. Eh, what if there's a privilege mitigating, sir? Okay, ibaba mo ng one, de one degree, tapos impose it in its maximum period. So, special complex crime, you don't need to determine which one carries the, which one is the most serious crime, no? And impose it to its maximum period, no. Because there is a specific penalty provided for, by law, for special complex crime, such as rape with homicide, robbery with homicide, robbery with rape, and etc. Okay, specifically, uh, let's discuss, before we have a break, let's discuss um, special complex crime of rape and homicide. What are the elements of special complex crime uh, with homicide? No? Uh, next, please. Now, number one, the appellant had cardinal knowledge of a woman. Second, uh, no, uh, cardinal knowledge of a woman was achieved by means of force threat or intimidation entered by reason or on occasion of such carnal knowledge by means of force, threat, or intimidation, the appellant killed a woman. So that's rape with homicide. In this case, unfortunately, you know, the post-mortem examination of the victim's body revealed that she had lacerations on her private parts and that she recently lost her virginity, which more likely meant that the assailant had cardinal knowledge of her. The contusions, yung abrasions da at injury sa kanyang katawan, at lalo na yung kanyang head injury, uh, signify that such cardinal knowledge was achieved. Why? By means of, uh, unfortunately, no, uh, ginapitat siya ng force at intimidation, uh, which eventually led to her death. The testimonies of the medical legal as well as those of other prosecution witnesses, when considered together, would lead to the conclusion that uh, this accused actually committed the crime. Okay, so let's have a uh, a break. <laughs> Welcome back to Casa Discurso. Again, we would like to thank our sponsors, Rex Bookstore and Central Books, and also to our viewers. Feel free to drop your questions for Dean Fastin if you have any. And now let me give the floor back to Dean Fastin. Dean? Ah, thank you very much, uh, Cherry. Let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, uh, we have already, uh, is, is there a complex crime of, 
robbery with homicide and double homicide. <clears throat> so we finished already uh, rape. No. Yeah. Uh, the answer is so we're now on a special complex crime. As I mentioned a while ago, pag special complex crime yan, I two crimes committed punished but under a single provision of the revised penal code. No? So ang tanong is meron bang special complex crime of robbery with homicide and normal frustrated homicide. The offender, the offense should have been designated as robbery with homicide alone, regardless of the number of homicides or injuries in, uh, committed. These other felonies have as the most and under appropriate uh, circumstance been considered merely as a generic aggravating and which can be offset by any mitigating circumstance. So pag tinawag na homicide is used in its generic sense, that is any act that results in death. And any other act producing injury short of death is in integrated in the homicide committed by reason or on occasion of robbery assuming of course that the homicide is consummated if that uh, no, if no death uh, supervised the appeal should have been held liable for separate uh, crimes of robbery and frustrated or attempted uh, homicide or robbery no uh, if the latter offenses were not necessary for the commission of the robbery or for a complex crime of robbery and frustrated or attempted homicide or murder under Article 48 of the Code, if the latter offenses were a necessary means to commit another. Uh, bigyan ko lang ko ng background ko ano ba yung robbery with homicide. No? Uh, this has a separate rule class uh, you listen uh, this has a separate rule in so far as uh, conspiracy is committed ito nakalagay by reason or on occasion of robbery somebody dies then the crime is robbery with homicide no um dapat paano, paano nagkakaroon ng robbery with homicide dapat at the onset there is intent to rob no, or intent to gain and that before the robbery during the robbery and after the robbery no somebody dies then it's robbery with homicide no even if death is not intentional even if death is not intentional so if for example um somebody dies no the victim dies because the 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 victim fell from the stairs no when the uh, when the robbers were about to leave then it's still robbery with homicide no e paano sir kung ang nalaglag ay namatay ay co conspirator it still is robbery with homicide because the law provides that if by reason or indication of robbery somebody dies whether accidental or intentional and whether the person who died is also a co-conspirator, regardless, for as long death occurs before the robbery, during the robbery, or after the robbery, it's robbery with homicide. No? So, sir, ibig sabihin, uh, walang robbery with murder? Wala. As I've said, if, if it's intentional, it's robbery with homicide. E eh, paano sir kung maraming namatay? Yun nga, may complex crime ba? Robbery with homicide and double frustration. Hindi, lahat yun is robbery with homicide. As I as explained in this uh, uh, decision rendered by the Supreme Court, and these other felonies have at the most and other appropriate cases, sabi ng court, been considered merely as a generic ag aggravating, which can be upset by many mitigating circumstances. No? Uh, it may fall perhaps under Article 48, but it's not uh, here uh, as a special complex crime. 
for as long as the latter offenses were the necess necessary means to commit the crime of robbery. No. So there is a robbery with homicide. There is also a robbery uh, with rape. No. Rob special complex crime of robbery with rape. Uh, Aide, balikan ko lang yung robbery with homicide. As I've said, kasi lumalabas to sa bar. And this is a favorite bar question. And this may even be asked in the bar exam. If, if, robbery, if there is no intent to gain at the onset, there can never be a special complex crime of robbery with homicide. Kung ang facts of the case is, say for example, A, B, and C decided to murder X and, uh, and conspired to commit to uh, murder X. And then uh, uh, on the date and uh, time that they uh, plan to actually, to, to, to realize that, uh, that crime, they, they actually killed the victim. But after killing the victim, they saw a jewelry box. And they forcibly opened the, the, the jewelry box. And they divided among themselves the, the jewels found therein. So, is there robbery with homicide? Wala. Because at the end onset, at the very beginning, there's no intent to gain. What was the initial plan? There was intent to kill. And robbery is only an afterthought after the killing. If robbery is an afterthought after the killing, then two separate crimes are committed. But it should not fall under a special complex crime of robbery with homicide. Remember that. Now, there's such thing as robbery with rape. Again, if by reason or on occasion of rape, uh, of robbery, somebody was raped, no? then all of them would be liable for robbery with rape, even if rape is not part of the plan. This is also true with robbery with homicide. Even if the killing is not planned, for as long as somebody dies, no? uh, before, during, or after the robbery, then all of them would be liable for robbery with homicide unless they can show that they prevented the commission of the homicide or the rape as the case may be okay so let's go specifically next slide please that what are the elements of a special complex crime of robbery with rape okay the following uh, elements must concur in the crime of rape the taking, number one, is that the taking of personal property is committed with violence or intimidation against persons. Secondly, the property taken belongs to another. Third is the taking is characterized by intent to gain or what we call as animus lucrandi. And the fourth is that the robbery is accompanied by rape. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, the court agrees with the factual uh, findings of and conclusions of the trial court, and it was uh, affirmed by the court. No, uh, the uh, the absence of hymenal laceration does not exclude the existence of rape. No? We know that uh, actually. No, uh, the court has consistently held that mere touching of the external genitalia by a penis capable of consummate consummating the sexual act is sufficient to constitute carnal knowledge. No? And you know, importante the court has consistently held that the mere touching of the external labia by a penis paired with a qualification na quali uh, capable of consuming the sexual act is sufficient to constitute carnal knowledge. No? No. Let's go to a totally different topic. Let's go to grave threat. How is the crime of grave threats committed? Uh, answer. Article 282 of the RPC holds liable for grave threats any person who shall threaten another with the infliction upon the person or honor or property of the latter or of his family 
of any wrong amounting to a crime. The crime is consummated as soon as the threats come to the knowledge of the person threatened. So, ang sabi ng Supreme Court dito, uh, the court agrees with the appellate court that the crime was consummated as soon as the victim heard accused be after his threatening remarks. Article 282 of the RPC holds grave, uh, liable, liable for grave threat any person uh, again, as mentioned here, who threaten another with the infliction upon the person, owner, or property of the latter, or his family, or any wrong amounting to a crime. Kailan mag-consummate ang crime sa grave threat? No? Uh, the crime is consummated as soon as the threats come to the knowledge of the person threatened. As long as <coughs> the threats... No? Yung threat no, ay nasa uh, knowledge na, ng taong tinitreaten. Okay, next. Let's go to another crime. Kidnapping for ransom with homicide. Anong first thing that you're coming to your mind? Pag kidnapping. <coughs> uh, pag sabing kidnapping, uh, meron tong uh, deprivation of liberty. No? Committed by a private individual. So, pwedeng arbitrary detention pag committed ng public officer. Depending sa kaso, di ba? Dependent. So, what are the elements of kidnapping for ransom with homicide? No? Ransom, kidnapping for ransom with homicide. Elements are as follows. You know this already. Intent on the part of the accused to deprive the victim of his liberty. That's the essence of kidnapping. Actual deprivation of the victim. No? Uh, nakalagay kasi kidnapping for ransom dapat merong ano ang motibo ay mag-extort ng ransom for the release of the victim so that in a special complex crime of kidnapping for ransom with homicide no the person kidnapped is killed in the course of the detention regardless of whether the killing was purposely sought or merely was mere an afterthought no uh in the instance case, uh, in here in People versus Hector Conista, uh, sabi ng Supreme Court, the prosecution was able to prove the, for, the elements of kidnapping for ransom. Uh, uh, appellant's intent to deprive Arturo of his liberty was evident from the moment his freedom was forcibly curtailed no? because uh, they poked a gun at him and his wife no, while they were about to board their car. No? and made uh, the other person, no, the, the husband, uh, take the back seat of the car. No? So, or, so in other words, the victim was taken against will. No? Secondly, the prosecution was able to prove the actual deprivation of his liberty. No? Uh, there were witnesses who would testify that uh, the, victim, uh, the victim's hands were tied at the back with a chain. No? A third day prosecution also was able to prove that ransom money was demanded for the release of the victim. No? Eventually, the kidnappers agreed uh, for the am a particular amount of money. No? Unfortunately, uh, kahit nabayaran, no, the victim, the husband, was killed in the course of detention. Let's go to crimes against uh, property. Let's go specific. Uh, basic difference between robbery and theft. Pag robbery uh, and theft, um, muna similarities. There is a lawful taking of uh, personal property belonging to another. Diba? And that if the taking is to violence, intimidation against a person, or force upon things, then the crime is robbery. Tanggalin mo ito, then it becomes theft. Para rin sa murder, tanggalin mo yung qualifying aggravating, uh, magiging homicide. Pag meron, ito ay magiging murder. Ganito rin sa theft. No? And robbery. Pag may violence, intimidation sa, sa person or uh, with use of force upon things, then it's robbery. Remove that element and it's theft. Of course, there are other ways by which theft is committed. No, uh, yung finders keeping, uh, 
finder's paper is uh, is actually a crime of theft. If you're able to 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 find while walking along a street, siguro uh, a, a car, a uh, a watch or cell phone. Sabi, ay blessing ito kay Lord. Uh, Minigyan ako cell phone. Pero alam mo, may mga pangalan na kalagay doon yung gamit. No, it's not a blessing. You committed a crime of theft. No, the the thing that you need to do is to return it to the to to the owner or surrender it to the authorities. No? Uh, and also there's such thing as qualified theft. No, if the taking is with, uh, committed by domestic uh, servant, motor vehicle, uh, male batter, coconut taken from the plantation. If you recall, fish taken from fish pan or an occasion of calamities or even vehicular accident, those are not simple theft, but they are qualified theft. No? Sir, meron palang qualified theft na, ano, na motor vehicle. Ibig sabihin, wala nang car dating. No? No? Uh, there is such thing as qualified theft of a motor vehicle. There is such thing also as car dating. If the, if the vehicle, a motor vehicle was taken without the consent of the owner, no? wala siyang paalam, no nakapark binistrong ka kinuha sa sakyan or with violence intimidation or force exerted tinutukan ng marel yung may-ari then that, that is kidnapping but in 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 theft no he has physical possession over a motor vehicle motor vehicle no na receive niya yon no o sige ito muna gamitin mo sandali o sige uh, pagka ganoon ito ay temporary lang temporary lang ang kanyang uh, possession. No, it's a physical possession and it's momentarily only. Then it's qualified theft. Iba pa pagka uh, juridical possession where where that possession can even be set up against the owner. That's quali- that's uh, juridical possession. That would be a stuff. Now, let's go specifically uh, to theft. Give me the elements, please. Uh, under Article 308, the crime of theft is committed with the following elements. Concur. Next slide, please. That there be uh, a taking of personal property, belong to another, taking of stuff we get to gain. Uh, we mentioned this already prior, uh, before, just a while ago. The taking be done without the consent and that the taking uh, be accomplished without the use of violence or intimidation or force upon things. Dito sa Horka, ang sabi ng Supreme Court, prosecution satisfactorily proved that A or the accused took the bag belonging to another to R without the latter's consent and with intent to gain. The taking was done. Without the use of violence against or intimidation of persons or force upon things, thereby removing the act from the coverage of the crime of robbery. Next. Next, please. How is theft committed under Article 308, Paragraph 2, uh, 1? No? Under 308, paragraph 21 of the Revised Penal Code, theft is also committed by one's failure to deliver uh, the property to its owner. In this kind of theft, it is essential to prove the, finder, the finding of lost property and the failure of the finder to deliver the same to the local, local authorities or sa owner. Sinabi ko sa inyo ito kanina, no? Uh, uh, nakita nila dito dito sa kaso na to no uh, nakita nila ng Supreme Court na yung, yung witnesses ng prosecution ay uh, were able to prove na yung si victim si W lost his bundled batter bundled bunny after alighting from his car in front of his residence and forgetting that he had placed them in between his legs no na na probeto ng mga ano na mga witnesses no at uh, all the three accused admitted that it was the accused minor who found the bundle of money in front of the bakery pero ang ginawa nila which they later divided among themselves no dollars eh 
sa A, kay A, B, C, uh, certain amount of dollars. And despite knowing that the money did not rightfully belong to them. No? Alam nyo ng pulot yun, yung pera na yun. Uh, so, they are liable for this particular crime. Next please, let's go to Estafa. Elements of Estafa under paragraph 1B. No? Uh, yun, yung money, goods, or personal service properties are received by the offender. Not in the concept of an owner. Tatandaan nyo, ha? TCA to. Natanggap niya itong mga items through trust, commission, or administration. O merong obligation to in, uh, involving the duty to make or deliver or return the same. No? Avon products, ahentika, no? it is through commission. So, kailangan ang obligation mo as an agent, no? pag nabenta mo yung ano, properties, then you have to... Uh, to 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 remit the money to Avon and then you will receive your commission thereafter. Or if unable to sell it, then uh, uh, return it to the owner. Now, if you misappropriate and or converted it to your own personal use, then there is a staff. Of course, the uh, another element would be uh, if uh, the conversion or misappropriation is to the prejudice of another person and that there is a demand by the offended party on the offender. So, kaya kailangan yung demand. No? Okay. Uh, next, please. Meron ding uh, element ng uh, estafa by means of deceit. Tandaan nyo, Estafa with abuse of confidence at estafa with deceit. Two kinds in general. Okay? Difference is is a committed with abuse of confidence, the other one is to deceit. What is the common element between the two? No, that's damage. Damage is an element both of estafa by means of abuse of confidence and that uh, also by means of deceit. No? The elements of the crime of estafa, there must be false pretenses, no? fraudulent acts or means, for such false uh, pre uh, pretense, fraudulent act or fraudulent means must be made when executed prior or si simultaneous with the commission of fraud. And that the offended party must have relied on the uh, false pretense, fraudulent act, no? that he was induced to be part with, to part with his money or property because of such false pretense fraudulent act or fraudulent means. And as a result thereof, the offended party suffered damage. Uh, uh, ang classic example nito ay yung uh, estafa through issuance of a post-dated check. Estafa through issuance of a post-dated check is an estafa by means of deceit. So there must be a deceit that should be employed no? uh, uh made, executed prior to or simultaneously in the commission of the fraud. So a person can be both liable for BP-22 and uh, Estafa. Why? Because one is an SPL, one is the other one is an RPC. The elements of Estafa are not the elements of necessarily the elements of BP-22. No? They say and damage are not elements of estafa. What is punished in uh, I mean, of uh, BP22? What is punished in BP22 is the issuance of a worthless check. No? Yeah. Atan, uh, just remember the difference between estafa by means of uh, deceit or estafa to uh, issuance of a postulated check. Differentiate this from BP22. Next, please. What about uh, the difference between estafa under 315, uh, paragraph 2A, from estafa under 316, paragraph 1 of the RPC? Yung, uh, Article 316, paragraph 1 covers a specific situation where the offended party exercises or executes as part of the false representation some act 
of dominion or ownership over the property to the damage and prejudice of the real owner of the thing. On the other hand, uh, next please, next slide please. On the other hand, the circumstance did not be present for a crime to be committed under paragraph 2A of Article 315. Supreme Court in this case of Dulai said that the evidence does not disclose that the appellant had exercised certain acts of ownership or dominion beyond his mere pointing of the property to the offended party and his claim that he was the owner thereof. Yun lang, sinabi niya, ay ako owner niyan. No? Uh, so yun. Uh, there is deceit in so far as petitioner is concerned. No? Uh, what is the uh, deceit and employment of a conflicting claims? That the type, the title property the, to the subject property is simply being reconstituted to reflect their names, that they are the same persons uh, indicated therein. Uh, sabi the Supreme Court, oh, you, uh, you uh, no, uh, committed deceit. No? Uh, yun. Merong false pretense of ownership, no, which could be transfer valid title to the subject property, and it was committed prior to and simultaneous with the commission of fraud. Now, in this case, the private complainant relied on these false pretenses, induced and impelled them to purchase the subject property from sham owners, no, who do not uh, have any color of title and pay them the total amount of 700,000 pesos. Uh, okay, uh, let's go to, well, um, lastly, I'm sorry, Supreme Court, petitioners did not exercise acts of dominion or ownership over the property other than their false pretense or and claim that they own it, you know? So fraudulent acts of petitioner in pretending to own the real property and selling it is not equivalent to an exercise of an act of dominion or ownership which damage and prejudice the real owner of the thing. Huh? So hindi pwedeng i-consider yung exercise of act of na as an act of dominion or of or ownership if that is only through false pretense, no? Okay. Next, let's go to uh, tandaan nyo, pag sa bar exam, remember nyo yung crimes which are similar but not identical. So, uh, like for example, kanina, uh, example of Estafa through BP-22. Both are similar but not identical. Of course, BP-22 is punished under the SPL, no? Uh, like estafa through and illegal recruitment. No? Meron silang isang aspect sa illegal recruitment that's similar but not identical. Okay, so how do we differentiate these two? Next please. In estafa, we know uh, in estafa, damage is essential but not in the crime of illegal recruitment. Why? As to the latter, in illegal recruitment, it is the lack of the necessary license or authority, but not the fact of payment that renders the recruitment activity as a no good. Question. Next. Pwede bang maging liable ang isang tao for estafa and at the same time illegal recruitment? Answer. Of course. Yes. It is settled that a person for the same act may be convicted separately for illegal recruitment you know, under RA8042 or the Labor Code and under Estafa of the RPC. You know, case law holds that the same pieces of evidence that establish liability for illegal recruitment in large scale confirm culpability for Estafa. You know? But the elements are not actually the same. Uh, susugang ko lang yung sinabi dito ng Supreme Court. Uh, alam niyo, yung konsepto ng 
legal recruitment. This may be undertaken by either a non-licensed or licensed holder. Non-licensed holders are liable for the simple act of engaging in recruitment at placement activities. Yung licensed holders naman may be held liable for the prohibited acts under Section 6 of RA HC of 42. Uh, and further, yung illegal recruitment is then done in large scale and is considered as an offense involving economic sabotage if it is committed against three or more persons individually or as a group. No? Sa ano ba yung uh, illegal recruitment in large scale? Illegal in large, uh, recruitment in large scale, number one, the person charged undertook any recruitment activity no? and that accused did not have the license or authority to lawfully engage. And number three, accused omitted the same against three committed the same against three or more persons uh, individually or as a group. No? So, just remember that. Pagka-estafa naman, accused defrauded another by abuse of confidence or by means of deceit. Uh, ano, deceit. At the offended party or third party suffered damage or pre prejudice the capable of pecuniary estimation. Uh, ayun. So, but instead, sa, ano, sa staff, there, he, the, the, the accused, but is guilty of both uh, staff and illegal recruitment. Sabi ng court, the prosecution sufficiently established that accused appellate defrauded the four uh, private complainants by making them believe that she has the capacity to deploy them to Japan as factory workers. And even if she did not have the authority or license for that purpose. No? And because of accused appellant's promises to deploy them to Japan, the victims were willing to uh, part, willingly parted with their money as processing and placement fees. And consequently, all the victims suffered damages, no? each as the promised uh, employment abroad never materialized. And the said money they parted with were never recovered. Okay, let's go to arson. Arson with homicide. So, Tano, how is arson with homicide committed? Uh, it is committed uh, when the arson place first is committed when there is intentional burning. And what is intentionally burned is an inhabited house or dwelling. No? Ang sa kaso na to, uh, people versus may also add, uh, the, the lower court found that the prosecution positively proved that the accused appellant deliberately set fire their house, which resulted in the death of these two inhabitants. Inhabitants, no? So the accused, uh, the, the accused appellant's acts before and during and after the fire would establish that, in fact, no, he's, uh, she's guilty of proof beyond reasonable doubt that she committed this crime because of the unbroken chain of events which led to the fair and reasonable conclusion that she actually intended to set the house on fire tandaan niyo sa arson walang frustrated arson even the burning of the portion of the victim would already amount to frustrated arson next malicious mischief no, uh, alam niyo na yun, elements of malicious mischief. No? Deliberate, uh, uh, offender deliberately caused damage to the property of another. Next, please. Next, please. That such act does not constitute arson or other crimes involving destruction. The act of damaging another's property be committed really for the sake of damaging it. So under the third element, you know, 
here assuming that petitioner owned the property in controversy, he and his co accused were not justified in summarily destroying the improvements built thereon by B. They unlawfully took the law into their own hands when they surreptitiously entered B's enclosed lot and destroyed its fence and foundation. Uh, evidently, uh, the act of the petitioner was made out of yung revenge, evil motive, or hatred. <coughs> okay, next is bigamy. Ito, baka itanong sa bar exam ito at tandaan nyo. Next question. Is a void of initial marriage a valid defense in bigamy? Is a void of initial marriage a valid defense? Uh, defense in bigamy. Answer. Sabi ng Supreme Court in the case of uh, Pulido, alam niyo to, siguro nabasa niyo yung Pulido case eh. About a void of initial marriage is now a valid defense in the prosecution for bigamy even without a judicial declaration of absolute guarantee. Di ba dati nun? <coughs> Bago ka uh, makamary uh, pag uh, kinasuhan ka ng bigamy at uh, sinabo mo lang na may pending pending uh, petition for uh, nullity of marriage ka, that will be, be, not be a complete defense. Ngayon, hindi lang pending. Uh, pag wala kang penile na judicial declaration of absolute nullity, walang problema doon. Now, we said that uh, that there is uh, that the first marriage is void. You can already uh, present that in court, no, in a criminal court, without even filing a judicial declaration of nullity of their age. If you, um, the reason only why you want, like to file a petition for judicial declaration is if you want to uh, remarry, but that should not be, uh, that has nothing to do with the crime of bigamy, no. Uh, in other words, a void of initial marriage is now a valid defense in the prosecution for bigamy even without a judicial declaration uh, of absolute nullity. So consequently, consequently, yung judicial declaration of absolute nullity of either yung first marriage and second marriage marriages obtained by the accused is considered as a valid defense in bigamy. Sabi pa ng court, during the pendency of the bigamy case, Bolido obtained a judicial declaration of nullity of his first marriage. No? However, the court, relying on settled jurisprudence, denied the same and convicted him of bigamy. Kasi yun nga yung, yung, da, yung dating ano eh, uh, rule. Eh, no? So kaya nga sabi ng Supreme Court, uh, to summarize and for future guidance, Parties are not required to obtain a judicial declaration of absolute nullity of avoid of initial uh, first and subsequent marriages in order to raise it as a defense in bigamy. Because usually, di ba, uh, if somebody files a bigamy case, you file a petition for declaration of nullity of either the first or the second marriage. But no, this time around, you don't have to, to file the same. All you need is if you, if, if you contend uh, that uh, indeed uh, the first marriage or second marriage is void, then you present that evidence to the criminal case uh, or hearing the bigamy case. Huh? So, tatandaan yun. Katulad ng kaso na to, kasi she, she, he was married when he was only 16 years of age. So, void ang marriage niya. So, he doesn't even have to file. Sabi niya, just present it in court, present mo niya yung kanyang marriage certificate. Okay? Next. So, okay na tayo with, with uh, book 1. Let's go to part 3, which is uh, special penal laws. Now, uh, basic difference between the SPL and RPC. If it is an RPC, it's mala in se, the, uh, the crime is committed, na it's, it's, it's evil in its nature. Na? And therefore, since it's mala in se, then uh, good faith is a proper defense. Now, 
Is there an example? Is there is this an absolute truth? No, it's not an absolute truth. Because in a technical malversation or illegal use of public funds, it is a crime committed under the Vice Penal Code. But it is deemed to be mala prohibita. And therefore, good faith is not a proper defense. It's a, te it's a technical malversation. Huh? So that's the exception. On the other hand, if it's an SPL, it's an SPL, it's mala prohibita, no? and it, since it's mala prohibita, good faith is not a proper defense. Is this an absolute rule? No. There are cases where although it's an SPL, it is deemed as a mala inse. Example of mala inse na SPL, plunder. Plunder is evil in its nature. No? So it's, it's mala inse. So therefore, in plunder cases, no? good faith, I proper defense. Now, remember that. Now, uh, what about others? Yung stages of execution, consummated, frustrated, attempted, uh, felonies. Uh, we determine that in RTC in, or, uh, in order to arrive at the proper penalty. In SPL, uh, the offender is deemed to be a principal. Okay. Unless the SPL uses the persons criminally liable as principals, accomplices, and accessories. Another difference, number three, the stages of execution, consummated, frustrated, and attempted. Now, we determine the stages of execution in order to arrive at the proper penalty to be imposed. In SPL, it is deemed to be consummated, generally. Unless your SPL uh, uses these stages of execution. Okay? What else? The, uh, the rule of offsetting, the you know, offsetting uh, appreciation of the uh, mitigating and aggravating circumstances. No material in RPC, but not in SPL. Why is it material in RPC? Because in order to arrive at the proper penalty to be imposed. Sa SPL, walang rule of offsetting. Okay, what else? The nomenclature of penalties are applicable to RPC. Like, uh, mga reclusion temporal, reclusion mayor. Now, in so far as SPL is concerned, there is a specific penalty provided by the SPL. Unless, unless the SPL uses the nomenclature of penalties of the RPC. No? Katulad ng child abuse, gumagamit ng nomenclature of penalties under the RPC. And since it uses the nomenclature of penalties, pwede siyang magkaroon ng upsetting. Okay, so let's go to the Anti-Graph and Corrupt Practices app. Next, please. Which court has the power to hear and decide uh, violations of RA 309? Of course, the answer is the Sandigan Bayan. Okay, next, please. What are the elements of Section 3A of the anti graft and Graft Practices Act? Next, please. The offender, of course, kasi ano to, anti graft So, ang offender dito uh, is a public officer, di ba? Sir, pwede bang maging private, uh, maging liable ang private individual under the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act? Sir, pwede. When he is in conspiracy, when, the, when the, such private person is in conspiracy with another uh, public officer, or if he's the one who uh, in, induces the public officer to commit the crime, such as in this case, no? Section 3A, uh, yung offender uh, persuades, induces, or influences another public officer to perform an act, or the offender allows himself to be persuaded, induced, or influenced to commit an act. Third is that the act performed by the other public officer or committed by offender constitutes a violation of the rules and regulations promulgated by, compet by competent authority or an offense in connection with the 
official duty of the latter. No? Uh, in this case, uh, prosecution failed to prove certain ng akusado. The liability by uh, beyond reasonable doubt. No? Uh, ano ang element na hindi present, present dito? The court finds that the same to be one thing, yung second element, yung persuading. No? Kasi ang uh, Supreme Court had the occasion to describe, uh, to explain the term persuade, induce, and influence. Can, can be taken to mean as the act of convincing or causing someone by some kind of effort, no, such as reasoning or argument, to do something that he or she may uh, otherwise not do. No? Ang dito naman, as yung mismong police that just denied being persuaded by a particular uh, lawyer who is the accused, he's also one of the accused in this case. While SPO 4 B actually performed the act in question. Uh, uh, sabi niya dito na hindi naman niya siya in-influence ni attorney, uh, ni attorney E in this case. No? Okay, let's go to section 3E. Uh, this is a favorite bar question. Kung may tatanungin sa bar, it on the anti graph it would be sections uh, B, E, G, and C. No, uh, we will discuss that specifically when we go to pre week next month. No, but let's discuss in this case. No, Supreme Court said that in this case, uh, the elements of section 3E offender number one is a public officer that the aqua the act done. In the discharge of the public officer's official administrative and judicial function that uh, was done with manifest partiality, evident bad faith, and gross inexcusable negligence. Tandaan nyo lang yan. Just remember this, that this is not just partiality, but the partiality must be manifest. It should not be mere bad faith, but the bad faith should be an evident bad faith to convict the accused. And it was not constitute as a mere simple neglect, negligence because it must be a cross gene, gross inexcusable negligence. So these three, no, the acts performed for these three, that the act was with manifest partiality, evident bad faith, and gross inexcusable negligence would consequently cause undue injury to any party, including the government. O kaya gave an unwarranted benefit, advantage, or preference. No? So in this case, uh, sabi ng Supreme Court, with the, uh, with the enactment of Resolution 30A and Resolution 30B, which paved the way for the execution of the uh, MOA, no? um, Memorandum of Understanding, the Sandig, the uh, Good Sangguniang Bayan of Baasin Iloilo clearly acted without authority and caused undue injury to the government when it authorized IBC to extract sand and gravel from the uh, Tigum River. Clearly, the execution of the MOA contemplates unwarranted benefit, advantage, or preference given to IBC, which is prohibited under this law. No? The said benefit advantage or preference would not be probable would not have been probable without the participation of these uh, uh, officers no? particularly the accused as the presiding officer of the Sangguniang Bayan of Baasing Iloilo Question 41 what does the use of the disjunctive term or connote? The use of the disjunctive term or connotes that either qualifies as violation of Section 3. Ang ibig sabihin lang dito, hindi pa pwede, no need to, to, uh, to commit at the same time these three acts. Any of these acts would do. If there's evident partiality without the others, that will be fine. 
If there is only manifest partiality, that will be fine. If there's only gross inexcusable negligence, that will be fine without the concurrence of the two for as long as it caused damage to other parties, including the government, or gave unwarranted benefit. Okay, let's go to the Comprehensive Drugs Act. Next, please. The concept of what we call as constructive possession. It exists when the drug is under the dominion and uh, control of the accused or when he has the right to exercise dominion and control over the place where it is found. No? Yon ang concept ng constructive possession. And it's also applicable here sa Comprehensive Drugs Act at saka illegal possession of firearms. That concept. No? Exclusive possession of control is that necessary the accused cannot avoid conviction if his right to exercise control and dominion over the place where the contraband is located is already shared by another. Uh, in this case, no, uh, in Emily Estores E. Pecorjal versus People, Supreme Court said that when a prohibited drug is found in the house or other building belonging to and occupied by a particular person, the presumption arises that such person is in possession of drugs in violation of the law. No? The fact of finding of the said illegal drug is su sufficient doubt to accuse. Okay, in other words, the finding of illegal drugs in a house owned by the accused, no? as in the case, as in this case, the room occupied and shared by uh, the petitioner and another accused raises the presumption of knowledge and standing alone was sufficient to convict the accused. Next question, please. What are the elements of illegal sale of dangerous drugs under Section 5? So, uh, ito ay sale. No, ang possession, ang possession ng prohibited drugs is not licensed or authorized to, to do the same. Sa possession, there's constructive and as well as a physical possession. Now, we're talking about illegal sale here, which is a favorite by question. So, what they have to prove no, uh, for illegal sale? Number one, next please. Prove me identity of the buyer, seller, object and consideration again if you're asked in the bar examination no you state that you have to uh, no, uh, prove the identity ng buyer ng seller the object and the consideration second delivery of the thing sold and the payment thereof now you have to know the, uh, look at the, uh, the facts of the case no? If there is payment that no delivery yet, then it's not a consummated sale of dangerous drug. No? Of course, even if this delivery and payment thereof, still dapat mag, they have to comply with the chain of cost to the rule. The identity of the buyer, seller, object consideration, delivery of the things sold, payment thereof, and compliance. Huwag niyong kalilimutan. Compliance with the chain of custody rule. No? In a bypass operation, the receipt by the pusher buyer of the dangerous drug and the corresponding receipt by the seller of the work money would uh, consummate the illegal sale of dangerous drugs, provided that they comply with the Comprehensive Drugs Act, uh, with, with the chain of custody. <clears throat> so, in the uh, so case of this, all of the uh, elements for illegal sale of dangerous drugs are present. The testimonies of the police officers coupled with the documentary and object ev evidence de demonstrated that A was caught shell, uh, selling Shabu to a policeman to PO2D who acted as the pusher buyer. The accused A receipt of the marked uh, 500 peso bill consummate the sale of the illicit drugs 
Hence, based on the evidence, no, the sale was consummated and the, uh, the confiscated item, uh, illegal drugs, which is the corpus delicti, was presented in court to prove the same. And yung kalilimutan, that the corpus delicti is the illicit drug, which must be presented in the court. No? If you fail to present it in court, that's fatal. Now, the court has to be convinced that the illicit drug presented sa harapan niya is the same. Those are the same drugs no, taken from the accused uh, in a, at the onset or during the by bus operation. Huh? Paano ba sir kung ano, uh, um, not compliance with, with the requirement? Uh, pwede naman pa, based on meritorious grounds provided that the integrity and evidentiary value of the seized items have been properly preserved. <clears throat> Ang problema dito, kaya na-dismiss ka kaso, is that yung absence of the representative from the DOJ and elected public official during that time. No? Uh, next please. Tatandaan nyo sa illegal sale, uh, identity of the buyer sell seller object consideration, deliberate payment, and compliance with the chain of custody. Sa chain of custody, uh, tayong wala akong ano, no whiteboard. The illicit drugs are taken from the uh, suspect. No, usually by way of, of a by bus operation. Anong dapat gawin? Sa simula pa lang. No? Na doon. Anong dapat nag mga, gawin ng mga public uh, Police officers, number one, physical inventory. Physical inventory and also photographing. Now, physical inventory uh, should should include also the marking no, of this illicit drug. No? And uh, secondly, as I've, I've told you, dapat merong photographing. Now, in whose presence? Ano ka rin ang presensya yan? In the presence of the accused or his representative. No? At pangalawa, it's dapat, uh, uh, it was also by virtue of yung presence dapat ng, uh, ng media or representative from the National Prosecutions Office. So hindi na dati nakalagay na DOJ and media. It has already been amended. Ayaw naman ng prosecution. Uh, pumunta doon, usually... So, uh, representative of the NPS, National Prosecution Service, o kaya uh, media. No? And also, in the presence of the elect, uh, of a elected official. So, at the presence of the elected official. Okay, how do you differentiate illegal sale from illegal possession of dangerous drugs? In order to secure the conviction of an accused charged with the crime of illegal sale of dangerous drugs, the prosecution must prove uh, beyond reasonable doubt the following elements. Si David na natin yun. Kanina, pagkadaban illicit uh, illegal possession, as I've said, is that there was a possession of an illicit drug. Possession was not authorized by law. And that the accused freely and consciously possess the, the, the said drug. Or what we call as animus possidendi. When we talk about uh, SPL, no, a criminal intent is not an element of the crime. But specifically, in so far as drugs are concerned, there must be an in, uh, 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 intent to possess, or in other words, freely and consciously possess the illicit drug. Okay, specifically, let's discuss the, the chain of custody. The rule on cost chain of custody establishes the identity of the object of the same or the item possessed by the accused without authority. Anong purpose? The purpose is to preserve the integrity 
and evidentiary value of disease uh, dangerous drugs. O PIA, PI, para you can recall, preserve the uh, preserve the integrity and evidential evidentiary value of the cis drugs. No? And it also it must be shown that the items presented and identified in court during the trial are the same items that were sold and seized from the accused during the by bus operation. You need to convince the court that what was presented uh, in the presence of the court for the same items that were seized from the accused during the by bus. Now, Section 21, as amended, provided, provides that the marking, the taking of photographs, inventory of the seized items must be done when? Immediately. No? Immediately, kailan dapat gawin? Immediately after the seizure and confiscation of the items in the presence of uh, elected official and representative from the National Prosecution Service or the media. The provision allows for the marking, taking of photographs, and inventory be conducted in the nearest police station or office, if practicable, in case of warrantless seizures. It further provides that the seized items must be immediately brought to the forensic laboratory for examination. Now, uh, remember, no. It should be play. It should be undertaken in the place at, uh, where it was seized, no, or at the scene of the crime. Uh, ang exception lang, no, ay yon. Uh, kung uh, not feasible, then you go to the nearest police station, or, or in, 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 in or in the place, the office of the apprehending officers. Question 46. What is the consequence if there are substantial gaps that occur in the chain of custody? Answer. When substantial gaps occur in the chain of custody as to raise doubts about the authenticity of the evidence presented in court, the prosecution does not comply with the indispensable requirement of proving the corpus delicti. In this case, the testimony of the police officers and the physical evidence presented in trial confirms the presence of the first two elements of illegal sale. There is no doubt that uh, the accused delivered the, this 0.50 grams of shabu to the uh, PO3L, who in exchange gave Mark uh, bills amounting to 2500 as consideration. Pero, however, contrary to the ruling of the Court of Appeals, the Supreme Court finds that the prosecution failed to establish the apprehending officer's compliance with the chain of custody, particularly regarding the required with the set to establish the integrity and evidentiary value of the corpus delicti, the proper handling of the uh, confiscated drug must be shown. So ito, pinakita dito, okay, compliance in love with the elements of illegal sale, but they did not comply with the chain of cause to do it, which is the required presence of the witnesses. So the case was dismissed. So tatanda nyo, no, the chain of cause uh, chain of custody, the court was PI, PIA, no, that the police officers were able to preserve the integrity and evidentiary value of the seized items. Now, kung di na-comply ang, ang police officers, halimbawa sa, sa mga witnesses, kailangan i-raise mo justifiable ground and for good reason. So if you're not able to convince the court that it's a justifiable ground for non-compliance with it, then uh, the case will be dismissed. Uh, so uh, the policy that considered the deviations from the clear-cut procedure may be allowed. Again, number one, 
must be satisfactorily explained by the prosecution, the integrity and evidentiary value of the uh, evidence had been preserved. And the justifiable ground for non-compliance is proven as a matter of fact. And of course, it must be alleged and proved that earnest efforts were made to secure the attendance of the necessary witnesses. Question. Next question, 47. Is the procedure laid down on Section 21, Article 2 of RA 9165 considered merely a procedural technicality or substantive law? So, chain of custody. Supreme Court said that it is not merely a, a, a procedural uh, technicality, but it is a, a part of substantive law. So uh, in this case, no, uh, there was lack of compliance. No? Yung pieces of evidence submitted by the party showed that an inventory report was not accomplished by any of the police officers. In fact, sabi ng court, inventory report was never mentioned in all the transmittal, transmittal documents accomplished by the concerned authority. And absent the inventory report, the required presence of the insulating witnesses cannot be considered to have been complied with. So, consequently, rendering a judgment of conviction without being able to establish that petitioner along with the other required witnesses no, under Section 21 were able to personally see the movement of the seized uh, drugs amounts to a violation of a substantive law. Next question. What are the valid grounds that can be raised for non-compliance with the chain of custody rule so as not to render the seizure and custody of illicit drugs as void? Anong valid grounds? Ako, police officer, hindi ako nakapag-comply. Anong pwedeng valid grounds do that can be raised so as not to render the seizure of this uh, uh, illicit drugs? As void. Okay? The law requires that the police authorities implementing RA 9165 strictly comply with the chain of custody procedure. Although failure to strictly does do, so does not it's a facto render the seizure and custody over the illicit drugs as void and invalid. As I've said, uh, ito na, na-explain ko rin sa kanyo. Justifiable ground for non-compliance at meron PIA. At preserve the integrity and val evidentially uh, value of the seized item. Next question. Uh, what is the consequence if the identity of the moral of the corpus delicti is not established with moral certainty. Answer. Failing to prove the integrity of the corpus delicti renders the evidence for the state insufficient to prove the guilt of the accused beyond reasonable doubt and hence warrants a acquittal. Uh, acquitted yet. Yeah. Next. Let's go to a different uh, topic. Illegal possession of firearms. Question. How is lack of license in illegal possession of firearms be proved? Answer. The acceptable ways of proving the second element of lack of license in illegal possession of firearms cases are as follows. Number one. Certification from the FEO. Fire, firearms and explosives. Office of the PNP. No? Secondly, in testimony of a representative from the Firearms and Explosive Office. Or three, is judicial admission of the accused or counsel. These are the acceptable ways of proving the second element of lack of license in illegal possession. Uh, yun. Next. Alam niyo, legal possession, dapat meron kang, uh, uh, meron kang uh, firearms which is that you're not authorized to do so. No? 
on and uh, to debug that then you, you can just get a certification from the fire exclude and explosives office that you are authorized by law by the issuance of a certificate from that office now let's go to qualified trafficking in persons which is 9208 the question is what is trafficking in persons qualified number one the crime of trafficking in persons becomes qualified when among others a traffic person is a child no? and secondly under section 6a the crime of trafficking in persons becomes qualified when the traffic person is a child, sino siya, who refers to a person below the age of 18 years, no? or above 18 years but old but unable to fully take care of or protect himself or herself from abuse or neglect, cruelty, exploitation, or criminal discrimin or discrimination because of a physical or mental disability or condition. No? So qualified yun, pagkabayon, oh, o kaya those who are incapable of taking care of themselves. And these are the victims. In this case, as court Supreme Court said that granting the prosecution failed to offer the original or certificate through copy of AAA's birth certificate, the latter's testimony at her age, that is yung 14 years old at the time of the incident, and and XXX express and clear admission of her age during the pre-trial in the stipulation of facts sufficiently established uh, AAA's minority. So, anong significance of stipulation the, during pre-trial? These are binding on the court because they are considered judicial admissions within the contemplation on the rules of evidence. Next question. When is trafficking in persons deemed qualified even if there is an absence of a birth certificate? Uh, answer. When the prosecution failed to prove the victim's minority due to the absence of her birth certificate, it however establishes established that the crime was committed by a group of three persons na, na, na prove naman that it was committed by a group of uh, three persons and by a descendant and a person exercising authority over the victim. Consequently, the crime still falls under qualified trafficking in persons under Section 6C and D of RA 9208. Question. Next. Uh, we're about to end, no? Do acts under Section 4 A and E of RA 9208 require proof of actual sexual intercourse to establish the purpose of, of the prosecution or sexual exploitation? Question, uh, answer is the acts under Section 4 A and E of RA 9208 does not, do not require proof of actual intercourse to establish the purpose of prostitution or sexual exploitation. It is enough that the act, transaction, or scheme, or design involving the use of a person by another for sexual intercourse or lascivious conduct in exchange for consideration is proven. Okay? Uh, now, Tandaan nyo lang yung, yung, yung qualified trafficking. Ano? Uh, tandaan nyo ulit na yung traffic person is a child. No? Uh, when the crime is committed by syndicate or in large scale. Pagka yung syndicate sa ka-large scale, ta ang point of reference is always yung, yung tatlo, no? three, three persons. So katulad dito, trafficking is deemed committed by a syndicate. No? committed by a syndicate if carried out by a group of three or more persons conspiring or confederating with another. Pag large scale naman, ilan ang victim eh? Victima. If committed against three or more persons, individually or as a group. 
no? or when the offender is a member of the military or law enforcement agency. From the foregoing, no, these are the elements no, of qualified trafficking in persons uh, established in this case. No? Uh, kasi ang nangyari dito, si AAA was recruited by YYY uh, and hired by XXX to work no, for the purpose of prostitution or exploita sexual exploitation. AAA and the other young girls working at this place no, dance on stage and perform other sexual exploitative acts to lure customers to go to the, what they call as VIP room. The girls working at uh, this place were offered to customers and patrons of the bar to uh, uh, perform sexual services in exchange for a fee. And the victim in this case, AAA, attested to the work she performed at this place. So it matters not that AAA said the court subsequently testified that XXX and YYY have no control over her sexual transaction with customers inside the VIP room. In fact, AAA testified that she independently transacted with customers regarding her sexual performances inside the VIP room. No? Uh, regardless, no, kung di nila alam, kasi ang child naman, the age niya, ay, she was a child below 18 years of age. Section 3A of this uh, law clearly provides that the recruitment and receipt of a child for purposes of exploitation, even if it does not involve the means listed in the same provision will still be considered as trafficking in person. Uh, so, yung Section 4A and E do not require proof of actual sexual intercourse to establish the purpose of prostitution or sexual exploitation. Enough lang na yung, transac yung transaction, yung scheme or design involving the use of a person by another for sexual intercourse or lascivious conduct in exchange for a consideration is proven. Okay. Uh, next again. In summary, no, for liability under this law, the, uh, as defined under Section 3A, trafficking in persons can still be committed even if the victim gives consent. Why victim's consent is rendered meaningless due to the coercive, abusive, or deceptive means employed by perpetrators of human trafficking. Clearly, even without the use of coercion, abusive, or deceptive means, a minor's consent is not given out of his or her own free will. Okay. Next question. We're about to end. Child abuse law. So, what is the intent of RA 7610? RA 7610 is a special law specifically adapted to provide special protection to children from all forms of abuse, neglect, cruelty, exploitation and discrimination and other conditions prejudicial to their development. It is contrary to the legislative intent of the same law if the lesser penalty reclusion perpetua, uh, temporal medium to reclusion perpetua under Section 5B thereof will be imposed against the perpetrator of sexual intercourse with a child 12 years of age or below 18. Next, when is a child being subjected to other sexual abuse? It is settled that a child is being subjected to other sexual abuse when the child engages in what we call as lascivious conduct under coercion or influence. Intimidation did not necessarily be irresistible. Sufficient lang that some compulsion equivalent to Intimidation allows or subdues the free exercise, free exercise of the will of the offended party. 
and the law does not require physical violence on the part of the victim, moral coercion or ascendancy is already sufficient. Okay, and for the last slide, uh, alam, well, just a reminder on the legal recruitment. No? Uh, how is illegal recruitment proven again? Next, please. To prove illegal recruitment, it must be shown that the accused gave the complainants the distinct impression that he or she had the power or ability to deploy the complainants abroad and in such manner that they were convinced to part with their money for that end. And to that, I end my uh, lecture. And Dean, we would like to extend our appreciation for the lecture today. And for sure, this has refreshed our baristas for the upcoming bar exam. So at this moment, we would like to open the floor to the audience in our Facebook Live. If you have any questions for Dean Festine. Oh, from Bernard Corrales, Corrales, in Baltazar, he was already aware of the dander of a second attack. Kaya sa first pa lang, nap, napagsugod ng accused, may treachery. Tama po ba, Dean? The, uh, um, the essence of treachery, yung kanina, di ba, he was able to uh, perform some act of ret retaliation by virtue of his reflexes. But it was not successful. No, sabi ng Supreme Court, still meron treachery. Because ang what is material is at the onset, the beginning. So sa initial attack, there was no opportunity for him to defend himself. There is treachery. Although subsequently, as his reaction, in reflexes, no, he was able to make a retaliation. Ah, so yun ang pinaka-essence doon. Still, there is treachery. And the crime, if he, he dies, it would be uh, murder. Okay. Um, thank you, Dean. I believe we no longer have questions, Po. So uh, I would like to again give back the floor to you, Po, Dean, for uh, your message to our baristas and, of course, our viewers and for your closing remarks. Thank you, uh, Sherry. Uh, to everyone, uh, just relax. No, uh, mm -hmm. don't panic. No, you have studied law for four or five years, and I, I, you studied well. Uh, you will be soon become a lawyer. Just have faith. No, uh, just have passion for that dream, and protect your health as well. No, kalawang physically healthy when you take the white examination, and as well as mentally healthy and spiritually healthy. No, uh, have a good communication with the good Lord. God bless everyone. Ayun. Thank you so much, Dean. And of course, I would just like to remind everyone for our upcoming schedule. We still have more subjects and lectures for the following days. We have, uh. Land title and deeds on July 28. We have commercial law on August 4, taxation on August 7, political law on August 9, labor law on August 11, and of course, legal ethics on August 14. Again, we would like to acknowledge our collaborators and sponsors, Association of the Law Students of the Philippines National and PUP College of Law. And Again, one, once again, thank you so much, Dean, and to our participants for today. We would like to thank you, and we hope to see you next lecture.